Rob Dillingham was just drafted, but Rob G has some information that America needs to hear. This is going to blow your mind, America. Rob Dillingham, the super guard out of Kentucky. Super guard. Was drafted by the San Antonio Spurs. Oh, with, so he's going to be playing with Wemby. We were all so excited. And now, according to multiple outlets, including Sham Sharani and Adrian Wojnarowski, Rob Dillingham is being traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Unfortunately, as of right now, we still don't know who's coming back to San Antonio. So this could go any number of ways. We could get the double big French connection with Rudy Gobert. We could get, hey, let's get Anthony Edwards over there to play with Wimby. Probably not. What if it's Jaden McDaniels and his 3 and D skill set against Wimby? I don't know. We'll see. But the point of the matter is, Rob Dillingham, drafted by the Spurs, on his way, though, to Minnesota. You know, what? I, this is a pet peeve of mine in the NBA draft that the, I think the NFL gets right. But right now, if you're watching the broadcast, you're seeing Rob Dillingham walking with the Spurs hat. You know, I, I saw earlier today, I was looking up NBA, uh, you know, the draft outfits. Shea Gildas Alexander was on the list. He's shaking Adam Silver's hand in a Charlotte Hornets hat. It's like, why can't we announce the trade and then make the pick the way the M- NFL does? Because the, the it's not like the San Antonio Spurs drafted Dillingham and said, 30 seconds later, we're trading him to Minnesota. That deal was already decided. I think we can update this, the show of all of this and make that a little bit better. Do you have any more details on it? I, I just you got it. Going. I you just got, got it. You're going to love this one. The Minnesota Timberwolves acquired Rob Dillingham. Forget this. A 2031 unprotected first rounder. Okay. And a 2030 pick swap top one protected. That's it. That's it. You're right. I do love that deal. I love that deal for the Minnesota Timberwolves. As I was, because I picked the Timberwolves to come out of the West, like early. I said after the trade deadline, I said I was like, the t- this team is they play lock up defense. Anthony Edwards is over here putting making a, a new poster every night. If Carl Anthony Towns can stay consistent, then they'll be in a great spot. What happened when they got to the playoffs, though? A Mike Conley, you started to see his age a little bit. He missed that game five in the second round, which would have probably closed that series out a game earlier, which would have led to a little bit of rest. Now, once they got to the Western Conference Finals, it was a little bit of like, okay, we've reached our ceiling here. And I know they laughed it off when Vinny Goodwill, friend of the show, asked him, hey, you guys haven't lost enough yet to get to this spot. He wasn't saying the Timberwolves are the franchise. He was talking about you two in particular, because most of the time it's a progression to get through the NBA playoffs, right? You see teams knock their head on the door a few times and then all of a sudden walk in a la the current defending champions the Boston Celtics but I said man you know what this Minnesota team needs they need somebody else who can go get buckets they have a ton of guys who can space the floor they got a ton of guys but you don't necessarily want Nikhil Alexander Walker taking all those three-point shots you don't want J.D. McDaniels putting the ball on the floor too much and Mike Conley at this stage of his career is not a guy who you're depending on to be consistent going to the rim and putting pressure on the defense. That team desperately needed somebody to take some of the load off from Anthony Edwards and Rob Dillingham, who his comps have been a lot of Kyrie, a lot of like, and I and <laughs> I love those comps. Listen, I know that everybody's like, oh, this guy's going to be a mix between Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Kyrie Irving. You know, <laughs> everybody is com- compared to a Hall of Famer, but I do see similarities in their game in terms of the dribble package and the ability to finish. He's what they call a microwave scorer. He scores in bunches and that's why I was looking at like a guy like Jaden Hardy who kind of cracked the Dallas rotation but not too much. Played garbage time a lot. I was like this guy right here, if he was on the Timberwolves, he'd be the second guy off the bench yep. getting a ton of run. Well, I think that they just probably got a better version of Jaden Hardy uh, who you know a backup for the Mavericks and a guy like Rob Dillingham who I think will probably start a few games or at least nothing else be I'll, we talked about him earlier today Jamal Crawford exactly. off the bench coming in here and filling up with the second unit could not agree with you more Rob Dillingham to the extent that I watch college basketball was one of my favorite players in the upcoming draft because I believed he was also one of the safest players in the NBA draft for the reasons you laid out in front of you Worst case scenario, if he doesn't reach his potential for whatever reason, if the game is just too fast for him, if the fact that he's a little slight of built, you know, that that he's not strong enough to handle the rigors of the NBA game. 
Worst case scenario, he is a microwave scorer off the bench. Maybe he's Lou Williams, right? Lou Williams was a perennial six man of the year candidate. Maybe he's Malik Monk who just got paid in Sacramento, right? Malik Monk, if he's your starting two guard, you're probably not very good. But if he is your sixth man, seventh man, I got to say your roster looks pretty solid. And I think Rob Dillingham, worst case scenario, is that kind of a talent. Best case scenario, to your point, he could be your lead guard or play off of Anthony Edwards in Minnesota. So I love the deal for them, especially when you consider all you gave up was some future first round draft picks that are like, I mean, six uh, years. 20, 30, 2031, I mean, who knows uh, who, uh, what, will the NBA still exist exactly. in 2031? Exactly. That's how far away it feels. The big three might take over as the preeminent league in basketball. I'm just kidding. But from the flip side of this, San Antonio, I hate this trade. Because what we saw from Victor Wembanyama, even though me and Chris Broussard have this joke off air that I've chosen Chet Holmgren as my tall, lanky, skinny guy I'm going to get behind. He has Wemby. I feel you. Okay. He a lot of sh- sandwiches needed between the two of them. Yeah, you, you, yeah absolutely. And, and I think that we can all agree that if you're going to have to pick one, you can only have one lanky, skinny guy that you're riding with. You know, you, you can't have two. You can't have two. You can't root for the same guy. You can't be a... Uh, Kobe guy and a T-Mac guy. You just can't. You can't be a Darren Williams and a Chris Paul. So in this case, in the battle of the tall, lanky, skinny, seven-foot guys, I went with Chet. He went with Wimby. But Victor Wimbanyama showed us last season that he is ready right now, that he can be the best player on a very good team right now. He has that kind of talent. He has that kind of skill set. And he fits with damn near anybody because he can shoot the three, he can defend the rim, he can defend in space, he can be a rim runner. Whatever you want him to do, he can do. And for the San Antonio Spurs to trade a player like Rob Dillingham, even if it wasn't him, just to trade the eighth overall pick in this draft for a guy six years down the road doesn't make any sense to me. You should be trying to make a run at the play-in right now. So I think the Spurs are making a run to play in right now. But what they are understanding, right, they're looking at picks 2030 is number one overall protected and a completely unprotected 2031. They said, all right, the Minnesota Timberwolves up for sale right now. We'll see who ends up actually owning the team. But whoever owns that team, you're a coward. If you don't go ahead and re-sign everybody after the best franchise, after the best year of franchise, uh, what the last twenty years of the franchise, right? Since KG, since KG, right? The, so. Uh, uh, they'll be in the second apron for a while. I think the Minnesota Timberwolves, like very much like uh, the, Min- the the New York Knicks are locking in this roster, the Minnesota Timberwolves should also lock in this roster. So what the Spurs are betting is that in six years, we'll be competing with the best of the best and maybe, just maybe, get a low lottery pick because the Timberwolves will probably stink by then. You know, if, if they're – because they'll be ready to sell off pieces after what could be three to four or five years paying taxes, being in a separate apron, having to make moves. Now, to your point about they need to push for the play in now, I agree. Because you got if you got a guy like Wemby, uh, you are doing your team a disservice if you do not maximize every single year. Just ask LeBron James the first go round in Cleveland, right? You got to put a team on the floor that can compete. Once you saw that he's the goods, and after about two months into the NBA season, it's like, oh, oh no, 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 no. Okay, everybody else is shut up because he's the goods. He, he's got it. He's got it. They need to pair him with a veteran point guard, somebody who can help set the table for him. Somebody who, like, the, we saw the show, the Sohan experiment, Jeremy Shochan. Uh, you got, you know, the, like Dennis Rodman out there, Dennis Rodman, Cisco type hair, but his game that that point Sohan was a disaster, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Uh, they need to a guy like, and I, we just saw him earlier on the screen. Uh, Washington he was on on the Washington uh, free, uh, I'm Tyus Jones. Free agent, Tyus Jones. His brother plays for the Spurs right now. But like that's the type of guy who you want. But you want somebody better than Tyus Jones. But a guy who can set the table for Wimby, take a little bit off his plate in terms of getting everybody organized, right? So I, I mean, I know you've heard rumors that Trey Young or Dejounte Murray's on the move. I don't know if they would take Dejounte Murray back. But that's you want somebody who's used to the NBA, like Rob Dillingham. For all of his all of his flowers. Still, this was a draft full of guys with flaws, right? Yes. And, as, and we're looking at it for the Minnesota side as 
He'll have we won't have too much pressure on him. He'll have the ability to come in and just play do what he does. 20, 25 yeah. minutes a game and yeah. do what you do well now right. and develop other things along the way. Right. They don't necessarily have time, in my opinion, the Spurs, to wait for somebody else to develop what they don't do well along the way. You need a more of a finished product doing more of your ball handling. I expect to see the Spurs to make another move here. This is not the first move that they will make to try to microwave this roster into play in maybe uh uh not necessarily like from four seed in the west to play in that's where they need to be preferably in that six five six spot because i think when you can look at a guy like wimby his ability is off the charts it's all about now how you build around him a veteran point guard helps that a lot more than an unproven rookie I would agree with you. And, and the last time we saw this kind of situation, and it's not apples to apples, apples to oranges, but the last time we saw something similar to this was in Dallas with Luka Doncic, yep. where it was apparent immediately, oh, this guy is something special. Yep. That we got to do whatever we can because as soon as his rookie season ended in Dallas, the clock started to tick. Who are we going to pair alongside of him that's going to get us to the promised land? And they struggled early on to figure out who that was going to be. They settled on Chris Stapps Porzingis. That trade obviously backfired on them in a big way to a point where I know that hindsight is twenty twenty, but when they had acquired Kyrie Irving, it was seen as a Hail Mary attempt to keep Luka Doncic because Kyrie's reputation at that time was so bad that people were unwilling to offer even, you know, a first round pick, one first round pick for him. But the reason why it was nobody was out here saying, "Yo, Kyrie can't hoop no more." Right. It was everything else. Right. Right. So they were able to they, get him at a depressed him. price. Right. So, but at the time, the the consensus seemed to be was, "Wow, you're really going to take this risk on this guy who hasn't played a full season of basketball in how long? He just ran his way out of Brooklyn with these, uh, you know, his vax mandate and his conspiracy theories and all these different situations." Now, thankfully for them, it worked out, but it took that kind of a, a swing, that kind of a risk for Luka Doncic to be you know, content with what they're building there in Dallas. And I just hope that San Antonio doesn't make the same mistake where come 2029, 20, 2030, 20, whatever year pick, you know, uh, get, they get it, that they're not saying, man, if, uh, you know, Max Christie doesn't work out the way we need him to, then we are really screwed here in San Antonio.